Hi, I'm Nicholas Yeo, Head of Equities China. China's stock market has bounced back in the past few months in anticipation of a post-COVID rebound. But we think there are a few points you may be missing. I will cover this as well as some challenges the market is facing. So why do we think 2023 will make investors in China smile again? We see three reasons. First, a consumer-led recovery as the economy reopens. Second, an accommodative policy cycle opposite to the US. Third, an ambition for self-sufficiency will drive innovation. You can add that China is cheap relative to other markets and to its own history. So there are four key words to keep in mind. Reopening, opposite, innovation, cheap. After a tough 18 months, valuations are attractive again. This market boom and bust is nothing new. Returns in China have swung from one year to the next ever since the A share market first started to open up to foreign investors in 2002. In contrast, returns in developed markets have often lasted for several years at a time. As more global capital has entered China, swings in sentiments have increasingly impacted returns. Still, China's A share market has outperformed the broader MSCI China index chiefly because it receives an additional boost from domestic investors. But even with a volatile backdrop, our emphasis on company quality continues to perform. Our strategy finished 4.4% ahead of the index last year growth of fees, putting us back in the top quartile of the Morningstar peer group over all time horizons. This track record, aligned to our expertise on Chinese companies, leaves us well placed to capitalize on economic recovery. So China's stock market is cheap, and that includes high-quality companies. This is where we see the best chance to generate sustainable returns. The consumer stable sector, for example, is trading below historical averages over three years on a price-earnings basis. Of course, investing in China comes with challenges too. The first challenge is actually reopening. While the 180-degree pivot on COVID policy is a positive for markets, it also brings with it risk and we expect a few bumps in the road ahead. To date, China's reopening has been relatively smooth. Tier 1 cities appear to be getting over the hump of higher infections. Becoming infected with virus has made people less fearful of it, which reduces the chances that authorities will revert to strict restrictions. The second challenge is property deleveraging. We believe the government will push industry consolidation to reduce leverage and to improve efficiency. But authorities also need to support demand to ensure people retain faith in the sector. That points to more policy easing, whether through monetary or fiscal channels or measures such as loosening restrictions on buying second homes. The overall confidence in home purchases should come together with economic recovery that we shall see in the second half of the year. Secondary home purchases will be a key data point to gauge consumer confidence. 10 million such transactions take place each year in China, and we are already off to a good start in 2023. Challenges aside, I would like to spell out the key opportunities we see. Consumption recovery. Now, China has abandoned its zero COVID strategy. We are seeing a recovery in retail sales. We expect immediate beneficiary in travel and tourism. But while investors understand the benefits of economic reopening, we think there are a few points they may be missing. The pandemic has driven savings in China through the roof. We expect a short-term rise in spending on discretionary big-ticket items such as autos, luxury goods and tourism. That bodes well for premium goods companies that are trading below historical averages. But Chinese households have stored up about a third of their savings over the last three years. This should sustain recovery beyond typical reopening rallies. A rise in spending will boost the economy and job market, driving a broad-based recovery through the second quarter. To capture that, investors should look beyond traditional reopening plays. Opposite cycle. Monetary and fiscal policy is accommodative in China in contrast to other major economies we see no change in the foreseeable future. Inflationary pressures remain low in China and unemployment is high, leaving room for slackness in the labour market to tighten. These are the conditions for growth. Weakness in the property sector means we also see further fiscal stimulus as likely. 
Again, the government has room to ease policy which creates fertile ground for investors. Innovation power. Chinese companies continue to innovate in areas such as technology and green energy. This helped to power earnings growth to an average of 14% last year across our large cap China A holdings. China's drive for self-sufficiency to reduce dependence on imports allied to its need to keep pace with the US in its strategic rivalry means we expect no lack up in this drive for innovation. Government support and private sector innovation have led China to produce global leaders in renewable energy in areas such as electrification, solar and wind power. This is just one of the areas where we anticipate structural growth in China together with premium consumption, digital, healthcare and wealth management. Cheap valuations. Chinese stocks are cheap relative to history and to the other markets. The AA share market was trading at 30% discount to 15-year averages on a price book basis by the end of last year. Yet, the market saw solid company earnings growth last year despite headwinds and we anticipate a further picked up in earnings growth as we look ahead this year. At the same time, global markets including in the US and Europe remain expensive relative to China and the catalysts for growth in those markets are not as strong. In a nutshell, that's why we believe China will put a smile back on investors' faces in 2023.